Jesus. All of my sins and griefs help it. What a privilege. Hey, oh, hey, it's your girl Lala Jenkins back with another YouTube video. So in this video, I actually want to talk about how, <laughs> bruh, God told me to start preparing for my husband. If you've been following my channel, you know I've been single since 1987. So the fact that I'm doing this video is tripping me off. But before I actually get into the video, if you have not already, hit that subscribe button for you girl one time for the one time. I feel like I legit was like doing like a, like a uh, two, three, and four. Okay. So I, um, so how this video actually came about was I was actually watching my I've Been Celibate for Four Years video. And first I was like, sis was giving slick hair and ponytail. I'm gonna have to recreate that. And so, and second, I was thinking I haven't did like a singleness, of, like another singleness update video. And so I was wondering like, okay, so what, like, what can I say? Like, what am I, like, what is my update? Like, what have I been up to? And God was like, talk about how you're preparing for your husband. And I said, oh, you, I, I am preparing for my husband, ain't I? He was like, you sure are. And so I actually, in this video, I want to um, kind of go over the things that God has actually been taking me through as preparation for my husband, okay? Um, but before I talk about the preparation, I want to talk about how God revealed why I was single for so long. So my last relationship was 2014, and so I have been single ever since then. And me and God, we kind of, we kind of been on like a little tug of war because to me, it didn't make sense for me to be single for that long. But I want to say about last, was it last year, God, that you revealed or was it, I feel like it was about two years ago. No, it was the, yes, yes, yes. Holy Spirit, hold me down. It was the beginning of last year when God revealed to me why I was single for so long. And so basically he said, lie before, and actually, you know what, I actually did, um, my contentment video and so in the contentment video i revealed what what why god had me prolonged um what why god had me in this prolonged season and so basically he would he revealed that he needed to make sure that my position was secure in him first he wanted to make sure that whenever he brought me my husband that i wouldn't make him an idol and he wanted to make sure that no matter what, no matter what season that I'm in, that my eyes were always on him. And so before he revealed that and before he actually started taking me through that process, my eyes weren't always on him. They weren't always, especially when it came to a man. Um, if I was talking to somebody that I really, really liked, it was all about that person. I was always locked in with that person, whatever he wanted to do, you know, however he wanted us to maneuver, you know, however I need to, you know, kind of adjust myself to be better for him. My eyes were always on him. And God said, that's not how it's going to operate in a kingdom marriage. Your eyes can't always be on your husband. It needs to be on me first. It needs to always be on me first. And God also wanted me to be rooted in my word. He wanted me to get in the habit of reading my word. And so in 2020, when the pandemic started, that's when I actually started to get up every morning at six o'clock and read my word from six to 7 a.m. And I would read my word and I would, I would actually read it with an open heart. I would read it as my life manual. I would read it as trying to get to know this, this big God that seems so far from me, yet he's so close to me, you know, and, and as I started to read the word and as I started to really kind of fall in love with the word, actually, I actually listen that word of God. Oh, that word of God be so good, y'all. I'm trying to tell y'all. I'm about to start crying, bro. That word is so good. Like, as I started to read more and more and get into my daily routine um, of just spending time with God and praying, um, that's when God started to secure my position in him. And that's when he started to lock, we started to lock eyes with each other. And now I'm in a position where no matter what is going on, no matter if I'm single, no matter if I'm married, no matter if I may, God forbid, but if I happen to go through a divorce, whatever, my eyes are always going to be on him. And it's not going to be contingent with whoever I'm involved with or wherever I am in life. If life is good, you know, it's me and God. If life is bad, it's not me and God. No, in every stage of my life, it's me and God, period. And God said, this is the position I needed you to get in before I could bring you your husband. 
This, this is the mindset I needed you to have before I could bring y'all together. Another, another thing he wanted me to, um, to get secure before um, he started preparing me, he wanted to make sure that I had a, a strong desire for a kingdom marriage. Um, because I didn't. If I can be honest, I, I talked about this in my contentment video. I didn't have a, a um, desire for a kingdom marriage. I had a desire for a, a social media marriage. <laughs> if I'm going to be honest, I had a desire for to look so good on social media and to, to post all these videos and pictures and always be recording us no matter what we're doing. And just look at how cute we are, y'all. Look at us. This is my husband. This is my kids. Look at our house. Look at our dog. Like, I was already locked in on whenever I get married, like, the world going to see. Okay, they're gonna see me, they're gonna see him, they're gonna see my kids, they're gonna see my house, they're gonna see how we living, okay? Because we over here living well, okay? And God said that's not your that should not be your focus when you're married. It should be, it shouldn't be to impress people. It shouldn't be to be bragging on social media. It shouldn't be to be putting on even when y'all arguing, you over here still smiling on social media and like everything is great. Like you shouldn't be trying to impress people or put on for people. That shouldn't even be, that shouldn't be your thought process. That shouldn't even be your focus, God. God, lie. <laughs> it's what he's saying, like, lie, that shouldn't even be your focus. And so as I really started to spend time with him and as I really started to um, just get into his word and really have a strong desire to please him, that carried over to my desire for a kingdom marriage. So I have a desire to please him in every area of my life, including my marriage. My marriage, I, the first thing, the main thing that I want me and my husband to do is glorify God in everything that we do, everything that we say. I want us to glorify God. And even when we're not around people, when it's just me and him, I still want us to glorify him. So how do I speak to him? How do I act around him? How do I act to him? How do I cater to him? I want all of those actions to be glorifying God. And I want anything that we do, we always submit to God first. God, what do you want for me and my husband? What do you want for this marriage? Where do you want us to go? Where do you want us to do ministry at? How do we point people to you? How does our marriage point people to you? That is my desire. That is my true desire from, from me and my husband. And I'm, listen, if I gotta be single for 10, 15 more years until I get that compatible husband that thinks that same way and understands that God is always first, and that's a non-negotiable for me. His word is always first. Then I'm going to I'm going to be single. But since I'm doing this video, I already know God got one lined up for me. Okay, he got me a kingdom man on the way. Yeah. But yeah, so like God revealed that to me um around January of 2021. And so after he said, "Okay, law, I got you locked in. You, your mindset is right. You know, you rooted in me. I see you reading your word, you're praying, we talking all the time, you know." You, you listening to me, you know, you obeying me, you following me, you submitted to me, okay, because I is. <laughs> then he said, okay, now it's time to start preparing for your husband. He said, he's coming, but, it, but I got to prepare you first. And so the first thing that he told me to do in January of 2021 was to let go of all of the guys I was entertaining, so I've mentioned this in a few of my YouTube lives, but God, I basically called it a man cleanse. So I was kind of entertaining about three different dudes or whatever. And you know, some past dudes that may try to pop up and I'd be like, hey, what's good? You know, but God was like, you need to shut all of that down. You need to cut it all the way off. No communication, no hey stranger, no DMs, no nothing, no dates, no nothing. Cut it all off. And <laughs> you know, I was like, God, you want just nobody to like, so like, like, like not, not just even one. And I was like, uh, uh, no, zero. Okay. I need you to not be talking to any person ever, not even for small talk, just cut it off. And so I was like, all right, God, I'm going to be obedient. You already know. Cause I know, if I, you know, if I cut them off, that means my husband coming. So I'm about to cut them off. Y'all got to go. Okay. Cause my man coming. Bye. <laughs> so I, um, <laughs> So basically, you know, I had that conversation and I cut all of them off. And ever since January of 2021, it is March 2022, I have been to myself. I have been to myself. I haven't even 
entertained a past dude. It was somebody that tried to pop up and say, you know, we could have went to lunch. And I was like, but we could not have. <laughs> we could not have. Okay, because I already told you, God said I got to be by myself. And I was, I was straight up with him. I was like, God already said, you know, we, we can't communicate. So, like, why we go to lunch for? Like, that don't make sense. You know, I had to let him. I, be, I was honest. I was like, listen, I'm not going to lie. God said I got to get ready for my husband. So, y'all got to go. I told him straight up. And they was like, you know, okay, I respect that. You, you got to respect if God said it. So, you know, I mean, I said it like that, but like more nice. It wasn't like, y'all gotta go. It was just like, hey, you know, God told me, you know, this crazy, but God said I gotta stop talking. You know, I didn't say all my dudes, cause I didn't want them to know I had, you know, a few of y'all, but I was like, you know, God said I gotta stop talking to you. Um, cause I gotta prepare for my husband, you know? And so they all received it well. Y'all don't even care. Girl, this ain't part of the video. Okay, but they received it well. I, I've been by myself since January, 2021. So the next thing that um, God, and it wasn't, it's, it's like I'm putting it in an order. Like God did it in an order. He did it. It was all kind of meshed together, but I'm just gonna highlight, you know, certain things that he did. So the next thing that God actually wanted me to um, focus on is my prayer life. And so, I mean, I thought my prayer life was pretty good, but I, I noticed I started to get a strong desire of how to actually pray. And so he actually led me to first this book, Understanding the Purpose and Power of Prayer, Earthly License for Heavenly Interference by Dr. Miles Monroe. So I actually been reading this and actually been um, really learning how to really pray and have effective prayer. And so God wanted me to make sure that I get that straight and then carry over into praying for my husband. And so as I was praying for my husband, he led me to this book, The Power of a Praying Wife by Stormy Omar, Omartian. Omartian? Is that how you pronounce it? Girl, I can't read. But uh, Miss Stormy, we're going to call her that. God actually led me to start reading this book. And so it is a book of prayers. But the first chapter, it actually talks about, let me, let me get in here. So it talks about the power. So the power of a prayer. Listen, let me, let me read this. It says, first of all, ooh, listen, sis, start the book off. She, I don't even remember her saying this. She said, first of all, let me make it perfectly clear that the power of a praying wife is not a means of gaining control over your husband. So don't get your hopes up. Mm. In fact, it's quite the opposite. It's laying down all claim to power in and of yourself and relying on God's power to transform you, your husband, your circumstances, and your marriage. The power is not given to wield as a weapon in order to beat back an unruly beast. And I highlight this. It said, it's a gentle tool of restoration appropriated through the prayers of a wife who longs to do right more than be right. And to give life more than get even. My God, today, it's a way to invite God's power into your husband's life for his greatest blessing, which is ultimately yours too. And so that is, listen, that's how she started the book off. And then she kind of goes into um, how her marriage was. Um, and then she goes into the, so the intro is actually, I, I'm trying to remember what all she said, but the intro is, um, really just kind of setting the preface of the whole book. Okay. And it's basically like, listen, we're not coming in here to pray, to change him. Okay. We, we coming in here to talk to God and see, you know, how, how, I don't know what I was going with it, but it's really, it's a really good book. <laughs> It's a really good book. And so after she does an introduction, she actually does some different categories of how you pray over your husband. And so his work, his finances, his sexuality, his affection, his temptations. So every area is covered in this book. And so God wanted me to make sure that I start praying for him now, because when I get in marriage, I'm going to be praying for him even more. Okay. Woo. Yeah, listen, let me tell y'all what. Also, God has been elevating my spiritual walk. Okay. And... What I mean by that, because it's a different, it's a, it's a lot of different areas you can elevate in your spiritual walk, but mainly he wanted me to make sure that I know his voice and that I follow his voice. Okay. And so I actually started to discern the voice of God when I started reading my word in 2020. And so I, I, I had, I felt like I had already had, I said, God, I already know your voice because this whole video is, is off of your voice. But God was like, <laughs> Yes, discern my voice and follow my voice. That the, the discerning part for me, that's easy. I, I, I can hear you, God. I know when you're speaking. 
it's the follow part that me and him been struggling with, okay? He's like, listen, when you get married, sis, you have got to follow my instruction because you're going to think you know better. You're going to think you know this man better than I know him, but I'm going to tell you straight up, if you follow your voice over my voice, you're going to fail every time, okay? You're going to fail this marriage every time. You need to listen and follow what I say in regards to your marriage and in regards to life period. But I'm just saying, this is for my husband, okay? So in regards to him, I gotta listen and I gotta follow because that follow part for me, it's been hard, okay? Cause God be, listen, he be talking, I, I hear him, I know, I know when God's talking. But sometimes I be like, mm-mm, I don't, I don't want to do that, I don't, mm-mm. So case in point, I had some, I had some, <laughs> I had some pictures up on Instagram and, you know, I thought that they were modest. I, I was like, listen, this is cute or whatever. I'm letting people know what it is. And God was like, uh-uh, take it down. And I was, and I, and I heard him when he said, after I hit, after I hit post, I closed my phone and God said, take it down. And I said, I, just, I thought I heard something, but I know it. He said, take it down. I said, I thought I, I, know, I, thought I heard something, but I know I didn't. Take it down. And I said, um, <clears throat> I didn't hear nothing. And then God said, take it down. And I said, ah, okay, Lord, I'm going to take it down. I'm going to take it down. Because I just, I was like, I didn't want to take the pictures down. And I know he was telling me to take it down. And I was like, no, because I'm looking good. And I need people to know what it is on Instagram. Like, and, you know, because I be feeling like people be counting me out. And I was like, I got to let them know what it is. And God was like, that is not a, accurate. That's not a good he basically was like, that's not a good representation of me. You know, you got your legs out, your thighs out, you know, tune it up a little bit. And I was like, but it was innocent. And he was like, if it's innocent, take it down. And I was like, I don't want to take it down now. <laughs> but any, anywho, eventually I took the, I took the post down because God told me to take it down. But yeah, it's like instances like that. Like God is like, you need to listen to me the first time. Okay. I shouldn't have to tell you multiple times to do something and you finally do it. He was like, you got to listen the first time because you know when I'm talking, I know when you're talking, I know when you're talking, Lord, I just don't be, mm -mm. but <laughs> he's saying, basically he's saying when you get a marriage, you have got to listen to me. Okay. You got to listen to me. And so I've just been, you know, I've been working on it. I've been really, I've been really working on it with the help of the Lord. You know, I've been working on, you know, making sure I be obedient when he, when he tell me to do something. Another one that has actually been tough. God has been cleansing me of ungodly ties and relationships. Okay. Um, I didn't know I was in ungodly relationships and, and I had ungodly ties to certain organizations. I didn't know until God started to reveal um, certain things to me over this last year. And I'm going I'm to be honest, it's been painful. It's been really tough because it's like God is removing this veil and he's allowing me to see through his eyes. And the stuff that I'm seeing is, 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 <laughs> I don't even know how to say it. It's just, it's mind blowing. It's really mind blowing that God is, is, um, is shifting my perspective and allowing me to see things from a different angle. And so God is, he, he didn't, he basically did not want me. He told me in my room, he didn't want me to go into this marriage with these certain ties to certain things. And so the first thing was not the first thing I'm going I'm to just say the main thing for me was my sorority. Okay. So I posted a video entitled, um, denouncing, you know, be, obedience is hard, denouncing my sorority. And so God basically told me in my room, I didn't mention this in the video, but he said, before I can put you in covenant with your husband, I need you to break this covenant with Delta. And I didn't even know I was in covenant with Delta. So when he said that, I was, I was like, what? Like, what? Like, what? Huh? So... Well, I'm not going to go into that because the video not about that. But long story short, I ended up, you know, denouncing a sorority. I ended up renouncing in, um, spiritually. And um, I broke that tie. And God also told me to cut off certain friendships. And that was a hard one, too. Um, because I did not know, which is something he revealed, that, that you can have a soul tie with a friend. I thought you just had soul ties with men or anybody that you, you know, been in a relationship with or whatever. But no, he, he actually revealed that you can have certain soul ties with friends. Because there, there's been some friends I've been trying to pull away from and it's been really hard. And God revealed it's because it's a soul tie and you need to break that soul tie. And I don't need you to go into this marriage with any unnecessary baggage. I need you to cut everything in the spiritual that you can. 
Everything that is not of me, I need you to cut this before I put you into this covenant that I approve. Until I put you into this covenant that is legitimate, I need you to go ahead and sever all of this in the spirit. And so I have been praying, I have been praying, I have been warring. God has connected me with some amazing uh, prophets, some amazing women who are advanced. I say they're advanced in the kingdom of God who actually know about spiritual warfare and who know about curses, who know about cut, breaking covenants, who know about breaking soul ties. And so I, he's connected me with them and we've been just praying I've been going to war, cutting all of these ties, all of these ungodly ties that have been attached to me. Actually, as of last, last night, I actually was on a clubhouse call. Um, it was about soul ties. And God kept tugging at me to make sure that I listened to the full thing. And so I'm glad I did listen to the full thing because at the end, they did a prayer over um, how to sever soul ties. And so I did that prayer and um, I actually added whatever the Holy Spirit wanted me to say. I added it in there and I severed all those soul ties in my room last night. I severed every soul tie that um, God did not want me to be attached to. I severed it in my room. My room. I cut it. I cut all the ties. I know y'all probably like, what? No, I, in the spirit, I cut it. I cut everything. I am free. There is nothing that God does not approve. There is that anything that God does not approve of is not attached to me anymore. Anything that is ungodly, anything that is demonic is I severed it in my room that night. Relationships and friendships, everything that was that was illegitimate, that was attached to me, I severed it. Another thing that God actually wanted me to learn before, you know, he placed me, placed me into the covenant with my husband was how to deal with conflict. How to deal with conflict. I... And I didn't even know I needed to learn this. But God revealed, like, I, I don't ever deal with conflict. If ever I see something that I don't like or if I experience something that makes me uncomfortable, I would just suppress it. I would just deal with it. I'll just kind of think about it and kind of go on with my life. I won't bring it up in conversation because I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just not a conflict person. I don't like discord. I don't like the, the possibility of an argument. I don't like any of that. And I was talking to a friend the other day and she was saying that maybe I should explore why I don't like conflict. And so I, as I was, you know, kind of meditating on it and just kind of really thinking about it, it narrowed down, it, I narrowed down to the fact that I don't like possibly hurting somebody's feelings. I don't like possibly, you know, saying the wrong thing or making somebody feel a type of way. I, I do not like that. I don't like anybody feeling uncomfortable. And so whenever it comes to conflict, I feel like if I say something, I'm going to make the person uncomfortable. So I'd rather make myself uncomfortable and just suppress it. If that makes sense. I'd rather just hold it in. And um, God revealed that when it comes to marriage, you have got to have the hard conversations. You've got to be honest and transparent with each other, even if it hurts. God said truth hurts, but it's necessary. That's literally what he said last night. The truth may hurt, but it's still necessary. And so I have to have that transparency with my husband. And so God put me in a situation where y'all, I'm not, I'm not kidding. He made me talk about how I feel with a person that I did not want to. I did not want to talk about how I feel because I didn't want to hurt the person's feelings. I didn't want to be truthful. But God, God, it was like God put me in this room and he said, I'm not letting you out until you, until you express how you feel. You are not leaving this room until you open your mouth and say how you feel. And that's, that's what happened. I, I had a phone conversation. I had to express how I feel, you know, um, and it made me uncomfortable. It really, it really made me uncomfortable. After the conversation, I had a panic attack. After the conversation, I was upset with God. I really was because I said, God, why did you put me in this situation? And I felt like God wasn't there in the conversation because it was it was a conflict. It was like, you know, the person didn't receive what I was saying well. And so I thought that God wasn't there. God left me out to dry. You told me to have this conversation and you just left. And God said, no, I'm, I will never leave you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I, I initiated this conversation. So therefore, I was there the whole time. God said this had to happen. You had to have this conversation. You need to start expressing how you feel, regardless of if it may be hurtful. Like you, you said it in the in the perfect way. I, I, because I was intentionally trying to say certain things to make sure that it wasn't hurtful, and so I was careful with my words. And God said, "That's all I needed you to do. You was just you was careful with the words that you said." 
And you can't, you can't control how someone one is going to respond to what you say. As long as you said it in a kind, a positive manner, you can't, you can't, you can't control how somebody reacts. You can just control how you present it and how you react afterwards, but you can't control the other person. And so he was like, you're going to have to start having these hard conversations. Okay, you're going to have to start getting uncomfortable. You're going to have to start, you know, being truthful about how you feel and don't suppress. Don't suppress, especially in your marriage. Do not suppress because this is the man I'm bringing you with to do life with. So you need to be transparent with him 24 seven. Okay, this is going to be your best friend. Okay, it's me and then it's y'all too that's going to be doing life together. So you need to make sure that you're, you're able to be transparent and be honest and be truthful, even if, if it might hurt his feelings. And even if he might hurt your feelings, those truthful conversations are necessary for y'all to grow and for y'all to learn each other and learn what you like and what you don't like. And so, yeah. And the last thing that he reminded me of that he wanted me to mention is in this video is that he has intentionally connected me with um, other kingdom women who are married and who have kingdom marriages. And so, cause I, I tell him, I'm like, God, I don't even know. I don't even know how to be a girlfriend. How do I be a wife? And so he reminded me that first I have him. Okay. I have his word. And then I, he also has blessed me with wise counsel. So he has blessed me with other women who have been on this journey longer than me. And who's going to be able to help me on this journey and give me wise counsel, wise advice, and actually give me, um, biblical sound advice. Okay. He's connected. He's intentionally connected me and reminded me of each one of those people. And so I'm just grateful. I'm just grateful. I'm really grateful. I think that's all I have. Just right now, I'm in the space of just waiting with expectancy. Um, I know he's coming. I don't know when he's coming, but God has reminded me constantly that my waiting is not in vain. And God is saying, listen, I know you're ready. I know you're ready. I'm getting you ready, sis. I know you're ready to get in the game, okay? But listen, don't trip because he's coming, okay? He's coming. But just continue to you know, abide in me, continue to abide in your word and continue to move forward. And when it's time, I'm going to bring y'all together. Okay. When it's time. <laughs> so thank y'all so much for watching. I'm, I don't even know. I'm so flustered because this whole video is like, eh? but thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. Bye.